Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is intersection of two arrays. So in this question, we're given two integer arrays, nums1 and nums2, and our task is to return an array of their intersection. So by intersection, it means the common elements among both the arrays. And the common elements should be found out by this condition. Each element in the result array must be unique and you may return the result in any order. So I've taken the first example here. We're given two arrays, nums1 and nums2. So you know the answer should be 2 because 2 is repeating here. 2 is the common element in both. So we write 2 in our output and there is one more 2 which is common. But 2 is already present inside the output array and the elements inside the output array should be unique. So if you add this pair of uh, 2 inside the output, it is not a unique element because 2 is already present. So 2 will be remaining as the single element inside the output array. So this will be our output which is expected here. So we know we have to deal with uniqueness and we don't know the size of our output array first. So because we don't know the size of the output array, let us create a list. I'm going to name it result. So this is going to be an empty list in the beginning. And now we have to deal with uniqueness, right? And also we have to keep track if we already encountered a common element. So a good data structure is to use a map. So let me create a hash map. So this map is going to have key and value pairs, right? So first we're going to iterate through the nums1 array from left to right. We start with the zeros element. We check if it is present inside the map. No, it's not present. So set it as key and set its value as one. Next element, we are going to pick two. Check if it is present as key. No, so set its frequency as one. Next, we have a two again. So two is already present. So we don't have to increment its count. Let it be one because we already encountered a 2 and we will deal with this uniqueness property by doing this. So whenever you find a new 2 which is already present inside the map, don't increment it. Let it remain as 1. So create a new entry. So 2 will be overridden with the value 1. Now again we are at this element. It's a 1. So 1 is already present. So no, no need to increment. So override this existing 1 by adding 1 and set its frequency to 1 again because we have to deal with unique elements as in the result. Now we fill the, all the elements inside nums1 into the map. Now using this map, now we are going to iterate through the elements inside nums2. So first element is 2. Check if 2 is present inside the map. Yes, 2 is present inside the map as key. And check if it has a value 1. Yes, it has a value 1. So only then add that result into the map. And now in the next case, we are at 2 again, but 2 is already inside the result. So whenever you add this, two into the result, make this value as zero. So override that value as zero because we already encountered a two. So this will be written as zero. So now we are at this element. Check if this element is present inside the map as key. Yes, it is present. Also check if it has a value equal to one, but this has a value equal to zero. So it means two has been already added into the map. So there's no need to add this two into the result. So two will remain as the output. Now we reach the end of the nums2 array. We processed all the elements and now we have our output present inside result. But this is a list, right? I have to return an integer array as our output. So convert this integer uh, result into an array. So I create an array. I'm going to name it answer, which is going to be of the size of the result. So I create a variable answer and then I'm going to iterate through this result and access one element at a time and add it into our answer. So answer is an array, right? So array will be created and whatever is present inside result will be added into the array. 2 is added into the array. And now finally you can return this as our output because this is an array. So 2 is the expected output here which is matching here. Now let's take a look at the code to implement the same steps. Now here as you can see first I'm creating a map. Let's take this example 2. So I create a map and I also create a, a result list. Now we are going to iterate through the nums1. So we iterate through nums1 and add all the elements into the map. So as you can see, we are adding that element as key and setting its value to 1. So 4 will be added into the map and set its value to 1. 9 will be added into the map and set its value to 1. 5 will be added into the map and set its value to 1. Now we finish processing all the elements. Now we have to iterate through nums2. So we iterate through nums2 from left to right. We check if 9 is present inside the map. Yes, 9 is present inside the map. We also check if 9's value is equal to 1. Yes, 9's value is equal to 1. Only then we are adding that element into the result. So add num, num is equal to nums2. So this is 9, 9 is added into the result. And now before going to the next element, we have to set 9's value to 0. So 9's value was 1, it will be turned to 0. Now in the next element, we are at 4. Check if 4 is present inside the map. Yes, 4 is present. Check if its value is equal to 1. Yes, only then add it into the result. And now we have to set its value to 0. So 4's value from 1, it will become 0. Now we are at 9 again. Check if 9 is present inside the map. Yes, 9 is present. Check if 9's value is equal to 1. No, 9's value is not equal to 1. So this will be skipped. 
now we are at 8 check if 8 is present inside the map as key no 8 is not present anywhere inside the map so 8 won't be added now we are at 4 check if 4 is present inside the map yes 4 is present so this part is true now check if force value is equal to 1 no force value is not equal to 1 so this condition is not true so this steps will be skipped now we finish processing all the elements inside nums2 now we have our result present inside a list but we have to return a array as our output so we convert this list into an array so create a answer array so this answer array is going to be of the right size of the result list so size of the result list is equal to 2 so answer will have two elements so we use a for loop to iterate through the list result from starting index so i will start from 0 so we are at this index so take this element and add it at the answer of i answer of 0 is this index so add 9 here next i will be pointing here we take the second element and add it at that position inside answer now we finish processing all the elements inside result so come out and return whatever is present inside the answer array so whatever answer has 9 and 4 will be returned as the output which is matching here so the time complexity of this approach is o of n plus m where n is the size of the nums1 array and m is the size of the nums2 array and the space complexity is o of n because we are using a map and a list to compute our output that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video